Hello Tyler, I've just finished watching your video about driving traffic to a website. Now, th that was a really good video and so some really good tips in there. The, the only thing I want to talk about specifically in this video, as you gather from the title, is that I want to talk about one of the first tips you mentioned. Um, indexing in, in Google and search engines. Now, there's something you have to do, and you'll probably know about this, it's called SEO, or Search Engine Optimization for short, and it's basically a group of techniques that will optimize your site for search engines, and I wanted to go into the specifics of that today there are some typical ones that typical techniques that you all have heard of and i'm just going to go through that a bit today my number one tip don't bother submitting your site to google if google like likes your content they're little spiders or, or crawlers or whatever you want to call them. They'll crawl your site automatically. Don't don't bother filling out all the description and the site title and everything like that. Because the problem with that is that if you, if you do that, then it, it might be worse than doing it what, what it was called organically or naturally because but by doing that you're forcing it to have certain tags on a certain metadata description but when it happens organically the tags that your website's listed for are much more um much more uh, pleasing to the search engine. Okay, my next tip to do with search engine optimization is just overall, you need to have your site indexed in search engines, but don't don't bother making a conscious a conscious effort to like like I said. That there is all this search engine optimization, and I'll be honest, I have done all of it, but it has not brought me any return. It's far better to wait for your site to get indexed organically. Now, have, having said that, I do believe it's important to make a sitemap.xml file which basically tells Google um, w w where to find your site and, and what the pages are and, and what, what's linking to what and that's usually a .xml file it could be an .opml but it's normally .xml okay my next tip is to have a blog the problem with static websites is that even if you create loads and loads and loads of pages, you're not going to have as many chances of getting ranked that, than you are if you have a blog with regularly posting content. Because no matter how many pages you made on a static website, because a blog is always being updated, it's gonna keep growing and growing, and uh, RSS, which stands for really simple syndication, it, search engines just love it, and SEOs love it. Okay, my next tip is t to um, to use a content management system. Um, 
the three, the three most popular ones are Dreamwork, Mambo, and Drupal. I'm not using either of those. I'm I'm using a tool called Website Baker, and that's basically a a, a way on the web of managing content. You could loosely, I suppose, call WordPress a content management system because it still manages content and that happens to be what I'm using for my blog. Um, but yeah, static websites aren't always the best in terms of search engines. Okay. So that just gives you a basic outline there. I'm actually using a content management system called Website Baker. And if, if you want a tutorial on how to use that, then go over there and use it. But, Tyler, I know you um, built me a... a a static website and for that I was very very thankful but the main reason why I didn't use it is not because I didn't like the design but more because that's not static pages aren't very friendly for SEO like I've just been mentioning because even if you do um, include RSS feeds and um, OPML feeds and you know whatever else the um, they're not always closely tied because you you, you mess about with links and stuff it's it's just not in the DNA of the system and um, static web sites they can accomplish really good search engine traffic but in terms of functionality they'll move. they'll never win against content management systems and content management systems are truly the way of the future so if you're using a static website right now the person that's w watching this video um, and that includes Tyler I recommend you create a, a subdirectory, not in the root of your domain because then you um, will overwrite your existing website, but a subdirectory and not give anyone the URL so that you can install a content management system into that subdirectory and you can experiment with all its features. And then down the line, you can decide whether what you want to do about that whether you want to employ the techniques that I've suggested well, well I guess that's about it uh, um, good good video and yeah um so there's Mo Mombo, Joomla, and Drupal. There are other ones. Um, there are other ones. I've forgotten what his name is now. But there's also Website Baker and a ton of other ones. I haven't found many tutorials on Website Baker on YouTube. So if any, if any of you guys would just be interested in a tutorial about that, I'd be really happy to do one for you because... The thing about the thing about content management systems is that they, they make it really easy to p publish a website. So so yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please comment, rate, subscribe, and I hope it was helpful.